Hello and welcome to the LARP Book Podcast. This is a four-part series in which we talk to Tintin about how she went about creating a LARP and how you can do exactly the same thing. So sit back and enjoy. And all of the details can be found over at LARPbook.com. Okay then, we are back with Tintin to uh, talk about uh, a little bit now in this series about the actual story. Um, so writing of the characters, uh, planning the plot, and everything that, that goes into that. So, um, so Tintin, how did, how did you actually go about starting this process? I started basically uh, looking at the lot that I previously mentioned, Laibet Joachim, to which I am indebted, because without it, this lot wouldn't exist. <laughs> go check it out. It's great. Uh, and it had the idea of waiting for a person who didn't arrive yeah. and who, in the end, during the LARP itself, something happens, which I'm not going to spoil, but I can say that it has a large effect on the players involved. Okay. And I wanted a little more plot than that, so... I basically started out by planning out the main event, which was the conclusion, and because uh, they always say, if you want to write a story, plan out the ending first. Yeah, yeah. And I decided I wanted a telegram to arrive explaining that George was dead. Because in every, because uh, in, for example, Vera Britton's story, uh, well, biography, she talks about uh, the time when she received notices of death about her, uh, I think it was her uh, boyfriend or husband. And w- and I also, in my research about World War One for further, found out that they had to, that the officers had to write a in case of death letter. And I figured that would make a very good conclusion because it could round out all of the other uh, conflicts. Yeah. So there was some closure for everyone. I so I put that in. And then I looked at the characters I had which were me, the game master. Uh, I decided to have minimal ties to the plot so that the other ones could have the most fun, who was his old school friend. And another girl who was playing his fiance, another girl who was playing his good friend, and a girl who was playing his sister. Okay. I had to connect them in some meaningful way, so I decided that two of them were ex-girlfriends. Yeah, yeah. Wrote that in with a very bad breakup. <laughs> right. Two others were, and let's see here, that was my character's fiancé, who was his good friend, and his fiancé, who right. had been left with only the words, and with letters that were signed, your chum instead of your darling. I also realized that it would be fun if I could uh, involve them in some other plot that had had with George to do. So I created an NPC named Philip. This NPC also had the function of a territory character in that he wasn't largely spoken about during the lock, so everyone could make up their own attributes for him. He was only really very well connected to two of the players, one of whom knew him from the local gay bar and one who was, well, George's sister was getting married to him. This created quite some drama. And went a lot better than I'd imagined. Okay. So I had that, and that was those were sort of like the subplots. And then I had the main plot, uh, and the subplots were character based. But the main plot was that during the first start, the, the start of the lot, we're sitting in a, in a cafe, and we've all been given the instruction to wait for George. None of us really know that the others are going to be there, and then we realize that we know each other, and then. At the very start of this, my character, the GM character, notices a placement, a um, paragraph in the local paper saying the area that George has been traveling in has been attacked by Germans and is being held under heavy fire, blah, 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 from this date to that date. And that day, this date being the date that he was, that George was meant to have set out, uh, on which point my character went, well, it's lucky he took the morning train and he'd, uh, and he'd written in the letters to everyone that, well, he'll be taking the morning train. So everyone was relieved. Nothing was going to happen to him. Okay, yeah. And then the second um, act arrives where they get the letter saying, or well, rather a telegram that has been delayed due to Germans. 
I don't know how accurate that is. It's probably not accurate at all. <laughs> that's okay. That's that that that's a plot device, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we even had the rule from Fairweather that this is not a historical simulation. Anyway, so we uh, all read the telegram, which said basically delayed by ten hours. Telegram goes out. We realize that well, this this is uncertain, and we're not really sure what's going to happen. Then there was some drama. Then the end of the lock came, yeah. or rather the third act began. Okay, yeah. The third act began with the aforementioned telegram of George's death alongside his final letter, which sorted out all of the character subplots. I could basically have pulled the entire LARP by just altering the final letter and all of the characters, or just aspects of the characters. So it was actually a fairly simple story, because most of it really hung on the first on um, three telegrams. Yeah, okay, right, yeah. From there then, uh, so you had to plan out all, all, all of the subplots, um, but I would assume then, depending on what was said, and what happened for those characters would possibly mean uh, a little bit of rewriting on the fly, as they say, or was it all very sort of structured so you knew kind of what path they were going to go down? Well, a lot of things were made up on the fly because I wrote down the ba the basics of the relationships, like you had a bad breakup or you were not good for each other and had a bad breakup. And then I sent the players away to workshop out what kind of relationship they exactly had had. Okay. I also told everyone, and there was also non-transparency non -transparency in the lab, so nobody knew anything about each other's um, papers. And there was, at one point... A, there was a fluke done, but it sorted itself out very easily. Okay. So I had no idea which direction the players were going to take it in. Mm. And even when I thought I might have it, they did surprise me. Yes, they always do. <laughs> doesn't <laughs> doesn't matter doesn't matter what what lap you run um what you th it doesn't matter and doesn't matter how many times you you try to work out all of the tangents in 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 your head and on which way each character can go they'll always find that one or three other ways uh in which to throw you off yeah we ended up having characters walk out which i had not planned at all <laughs> and <laughs> Right. They did come back. Often after I went off to coax them back, <laughs> and my poor character found out his girlfriend had been a lesbian, <laughs> uh, or rather, he found out that his ex-lesbian girlfriend, or ex-lesbian, so he thought, had actually been dating someone he used to know at school. Uh, so there was that, <laughs> and we also had a scene where we just, where I just came in with my friend, with uh, my character's girlfriend, the two characters who should have had quite a lot to quarrel about yeah. just sat there smiling and had <laughs> apparently had the most awkward conversation ever. <laughs> Brilliant. Excellent. Okay. <laughs>